12 years ago, I was 20 and I was depressed. Like seriously depressed. I was without purpose, I was failing my degree and I'd all but given up on life. Flash forward to today and I'm doing quite well if I say so myself. I'm a manager doing meaningful and important work. I'm married to an amazing woman. I have a PhD. I finished my first degree top of my class. So what happened in between those 12 years to get me from A to B? This one decision I made in 2012 changed everything. What is it? Well, it's quite simple and it sounds really cliche, but I decided that my life purpose was to do as much good as possible. And I attacked that with laser-like focus. I had this idea that charity should be about doing good better or doing the most good that I could do. But I got pushback from those around me. They asked me things like, isn't it enough to just do good? Aren't you overthinking it? At one point, they almost convinced me. Then I found out about effective altruism. There was this whole community of people who thought the same way I do about charity. And I finally felt like I wasn't crazy. And then I found out about the giving what we can pledge. And it's really simple. It's where you pledge to give 10% of your salary each year to really effective causes. At the time, I was earning 80,000 Australian dollars each year, which put me in the top 1% of people globally. I felt like this pledge was super doable. I really liked this idea, but I'm a little bit quirky and I wanted to do something a little bit different. So in 2016, I made a pledge to give everything I earned over 45,000 Australian dollars after tax to effective causes each year. At the end of this video, I'll reveal how much I've donated so far and what impact this has had, but I'll come back to that. I realized that I was living very comfortably on not that much money and donating or saving the rest. $45,000 a year felt like more than enough to live comfortably on. I'll talk a little bit about how I manage my spending and savings in just a moment, but first I want to say something that I think is really important. I think making these donations has made me much happier than it would have if I had spent that money on myself. Plus $45,000, probably gets you a lot further than you think once you cut out unnecessary spending. And let's not forget, on an income of $45,000, I'd still be in the richest 4% of the world. When you look at the data, someone earning 100,000 US dollars a year is only a little bit happier than someone earning 50,000 US dollars a year. In my opinion, earning $100,000 and donating half of it would make me quite a bit happier and more fulfilled. We also know from the evidence that for someone earning about $40,000 a year, other factors like their health, relationships, and sense of purpose matter a lot more to their happiness than additional money. Have you ever felt like you have to work harder or work more hours so you can buy more stuff to make yourself happy? This is a concept called the hedonic treadmill. You can just keep on buying more and more stuff and not really make yourself any happier. So how do I live on less than $45,000? Well, to put it simply, I'm frugal on the stuff that isn't important to me and I spend on the things that are and bring me happiness and joy. Rock climbing shoes and a gym membership? That stuff brings me joy, so I budget for that. Coffee? No joy, so I take caffeine pills instead, which are much cheaper. Buying lunch out every day in the office? Not much joy, so I usually make a peanut butter sandwich or meal prep. When it comes to holidays, I still go on them, but you know, occasionally and not that lavish. I still buy clothes when I need to, but not too often and not too fancy. Hashtag not financial advice, by the way. Okay, now why am I making this pledge? And why did I make it public? Why not just be quiet about it? I mean, charity should be private, right? Only people who care about their ego tell others about what they donate, right? I think it's actually more selfish to donate and not tell anybody about it than it is to be public about it. By telling people you donate and telling people how much you donate, you encourage giving norms, which makes it more likely that other people will donate. Look, let me put it like this. If over the course of my life and being public about this, I convince just one other person to donate, then I'll have increased my impact and it won't matter whether I look selfish. I mean, it's not about me. Also, there is the very real possibility that if I only made this pledge internally, over time my values will drift and I'll stop caring enough to donate. And I don't want that. Some people think that you have to choose between a career where you're able to have a direct positive impact and a career where you're able to earn enough to donate and do good through that. But actually, many people are able to do both and do important, meaningful work in their career and still earn enough to be able to donate and support causes in that way. I mentioned earlier that it's important to give effectively. And you might be thinking, why? Does it matter that much whether I give to one charity over another? People often lump all charities into one big doing good bucket. But there is a huge difference between the most effective and least effective charities within a given cause. There is this concept of a Pareto distribution and charities, among other things, seem to follow this trend. Some charities are just really that great at what they do. Take Helen Keller International, for example. They provide vitamin A supplements for children living in areas where 20% of the children are deficient. It costs them two US dollars to provide vitamin A supplements to one child for one year. As it turns out, it's estimated that $5,000 worth of vitamin A 
supplements is enough to prevent one death. Global health charities this effective are hard to come by. So that's an effective charity. Some charities, not so effective. Let's look at this example. And if you've seen videos about effective altruism before, you're probably gonna hate me because you may have heard this one before. Play pumps. People in remote areas in South Africa need water. So someone had this idea of making a children's merry-go-round attached to a water pump. The idea was actually kind of genius on the face of it. Children would play on the merry-go-round and push it around, and at the same time, it would pump water to the surface. Win-win? Well, no, not quite. It was actually a disaster. The merry-go-round didn't spin freely because it took a lot of force to pump, and so the children didn't want to play on it. And as a water pump, it just kind of sucked. So the adults had to spin this merry-go-round because the children didn't want to play on it, when a regular water pump would have been much more effective. The Guardian estimated in 2009 that someone would have to spin one of these play pumps for 27 hours a day to get enough water to provide for 2,500 people. All right, Michael, you've convinced me that there are good charities and bad charities, but how do we know which charities are good and bad? That's where charity evaluators like GiveWell and Animal Charity Evaluators come in. These charities' sole purpose is to find out how good other charities are. GiveWell focuses mostly on international development and global health charities, and Animal Charity Evaluators focuses mostly on well, animal charities. They've done the hard work so that we don't have to. So, okay, the moment you've been waiting for. How much money have I donated so far and what impact has that had? I'm around 10 years into my career now and six of those were spent doing a PhD and running for election, so I wasn't making very much money. But so far, I've managed to donate 99,000 Australian dollars. I'm going to pick out a few examples of some charities that I've supported so far and try and give a sense of how much impact that has had. For example, I've given $12,000 to the Against Malaria Foundation. AMF are laser focused on giving anti-malarial bed nets to people living in sub-Saharan Africa, and they're really good at it. GiveWell estimates that this amount of money would prevent one to three people from dying of malaria. Not bad for a white collar worker living in Sydney, I think. Imagine you see a burning building and you kick the door down and pull one person out and save their life. Imagine how good that feels. If you live a comfortable life, you have that opportunity and you don't even have to risk your own safety. As another example, I've also given $60,000 to the Good Food Institute. GFI is working to accelerate alternative protein innovation. In other words, modernizing modern meat production to not involve the animal. It's harder to estimate the impact of this donation, even though animal charity evaluators have recommended them in the past, but I would be surprised if this donation hadn't prevented thousands of animals from suffering. Whether you're vegan or not, we can all agree that fewer animals suffering is a good thing. Now look, I know what some of you are thinking. This well-off guy from Sydney has just spent the last six minutes telling us how great he is. But as I said earlier, if through this video, I've managed to convince just one person to give a little more, I'll have done some good. And it won't matter because again, it's not about me. If taking a giving pledge sounds like something you might want to do, then you can try it. Literally, you could take a trial pledge with giving what we can. You could pledge to give 1% of your income over the next year and see how you feel. Maybe at the end of the year, you'll feel so good and feel like your quality of life has not been impacted that you want to try giving 2% next year. If you want to do that, the link is down below. What keeps me motivated is not just my own personal impact, but thinking about the kind of future that I want to see. The future could be a wonderful utopia, or it could be a hellish dystopia. In my deep dive video, I talked about the possible peaks and troughs of humanity in the future, and how we might avoid some of the worst possible outcomes. So I'd recommend checking out that video here. See you soon.